Hey, welcome to Statistics with Mr. Robeson. Today we are going to go over bias. So what is bias? We're going to go over our six types of bias. Then we're going to take some a look at some examples of bias. So first, what is bias? So bias is some sort of design flaw that leads to overestimates or underestimates of the value that you want to know. So what's an overestimate? Well, it's when we estimate something too high. So we, we estimate it to be higher than it actually is. So like we think it's 50%. 50% men, 50% women, and we, we find out that it's 60% men based on our data. There's something biased happening there. Underestimate is when we go the other way. We, we think our answer is lower than it actually is. We get a lower answer than we should. That is an underestimate. So if one of these two things is happening, some sort of bias is, is taking place. So if we're getting the wrong answer, do we think that's good or bad? Yeah, that is fairly bad. That's not something we want to happen. So what are ways... What are ways things can be biased and how can we possibly fix these biases? All right, so our six types of bias or six types of bias that are going to be covered on the AP exam are, first up, selection bias. It's when our selection technique leads to undercoverage or overcoverage or both of a certain demographic in the population. So say we want to have half men and half women in our sample and we somehow take a random sample and we get three-fourths men. Oh, that's selection bias. We, we messed up. Well, we didn't do anything wrong. It's just randomly that happens sometimes. All right, but we would get under coverage of women and over coverage of men if three-fourths of the sample was men. So that is selection bias. Our sample messed up. Next up is response bias. So this one could be the fault of the people, the participants filling out the survey, or it could be the result of you just writing things poorly. All right, so participants respond inaccurately or falsely to questions leading to inaccurate data. So maybe they didn't understand the question and they answered it wrong, not with their actual how they feel about something, or maybe they just lied. Maybe they didn't want to share some information with you. They thought it was too private or they didn't like their opinion and didn't want to share it. So they lie about it. That is response bias. Next up, the easiest one to fix measurement bias. So there is some sort of error with the instrument being used to measure and record information. So, oops, your ruler's broken. Or your scale wasn't zeroed before you started weighing things and everything's off by a little bit. These are usually easy to fix because you just add something to all of your answers or subtract something from all your answers and that fixes our measurement bias. But that does happen quite often, especially in scientific fields. All right, voluntary response bias. So we talked about this earlier with our voluntary samples, voluntary sampling. Participants volunteer to be part of an experiment or are voluntarily chosen to answer a survey. So if people are volunteering to be part of your sample, you have some sort of bias happening there. All right. So sometimes we can account for that. Sometimes we can't. If it's an experiment, we can randomly assign people to treatment groups, and that helps out a lot. If it's a survey, that's probably not a great survey. Right. Non-response bias. So people often confuse this with voluntary response bias. So with non-response bias, people are chosen by us to be part of our sample. And then once they're in our sample, they choose not to respond. So the participants of our survey choose not to respond. All right? So they have been chosen to be part of the sample. With voluntary response, the people themselves are choosing to be in the sample. All right? Non-response, we have chosen them to be in the sample, and then they're not responding. Like they didn't want to answer a question or they just hung up the phone on us, or they said, no, thank you, I would not like to be part of your survey. And lastly, wording bias. So sometimes we do it on purpose, sometimes it's not done on purpose. Sometimes we word questions in a way that the, the question itself will lead you to an answer. And we'll say, yeah, wow, well, that question really think, after reading that question, I really think I agree with option A. All right, that's not a good thing to do when you're doing surveys. All right, so, some examples, and that's all we've got for the rest of the presentation here. So which type of bias happened in this phone survey? In a telephone survey, 96% of people said they always wash their hands after using a public restroom, even more important than normal right now. However, a very large observational study finds that the true percent is closer to 85%. So, we obs so people observed, maybe they put a camera in the bathroom over the sink, and, and just watched, but they observed and they said the answer was 85%, but in the survey said it was 96%. So is this selection bias, measurement bias, response bias, or wording bias?
All right, hopefully you said that this was response bias because people are lying about their responses. They're saying they washed their hands when maybe they, they didn't get a chance to wash their hands for whatever reason. Maybe there was a line. Maybe they had hand sanitizer and they're counting that. But based on our survey, they didn't. All right, example number two, which type of bias is this sampling technique? A sample is chosen at random from a telephone book, which only includes landline numbers. Do you know what a telephone book is? It's a book that has phone numbers in it in order to find out about people's shopping habits. All right, so is this going to be selection bias, measurement bias, response bias, or voluntary response bias? All right, hopefully you've had time to think of an answer. This is selection bias. All right, choosing numbers from the phone book used to be an okay technique. Now it's not, because most people don't have landlines, so they're not listed in a phone. Chances are you're going to end up with a lot of people that are older in your survey here, because older people tend to have landlines. Younger people tend not to. Like my parents still have a landline, and they're like 70. I don't have them, and I'm 39. I imagine most of you are too young to have landlines. So that is selection bias, because we're selecting in a poor way. Which type of bias is happening here? For a phone interview done by Verizon, interviewers contact Verizon customers and ask them survey questions. Many customers immediately hang up and do not answer any questions. Which type of bias is that? Is this selection, response, measurement, or non-response? Hopefully you've got an answer. This is non-response. They have been selected by the people making the survey to be part of our sample, but then they are choosing not to answer. They're hanging up the phone, which is what I usually do too. So that is non-response bias. Next one, which type of bias is happening here? A survey paid for by makers of disposable diapers found that 84% of the sample opposed banning disposable diapers. So they were against banning them. Here is the question from the survey. It is estimated that disposable diapers account for less than 2% of the trash in today's landfills. In contrast, beverage containers, third-class mail, and yard wastes are estimated to account for 21% of the trash in landfills. Given this, in your opinion, would it be fair to ban disposable diapers? So is this response bias, wording bias, non-response bias, or selection bias? Okay, hopefully you came up with an answer there. This is wording bias. The question is worded in a way that it's to make you think that disposable diapers are not a problem because they're less than 2% of the trash, and those other things are such a much bigger problem. This is called whataboutism. It's trying to make you focus on something else instead of trying to fix the problem at hand. This is an example of wording bias. It's a poorly worded question because the makers of the disposable diapers want you to answer in a certain way. Next up, which type of bias do we have here? An instrument used to measure the hemoglobin levels of patients is not properly calibrated and measures all counts as 0.3 grams per liter too high. Is that response bias, wording bias, measurement bias, or voluntary response bias? All right, hopefully this is the easy one. So the way that we are measuring things is messed up. That makes this measurement bias. Measurement bias, it's an easy fix. We just go back and subtract 0 0.3 from all of our answers or all of our data. And number six here, which type of bias is, is this? At lunch, students set up a table and allowed anyone to vote who wanted or who wants to vote for the best teacher. Is that non-response bias, voluntary response bias, wording bias? or measurement bias. Hopefully this one wasn't so bad either. So the people conducting the survey are not selecting the sample. They are letting the sample select themselves by volunteering. So this is voluntary response bias. Only people that feel strongly about certain teachers are probably going to vote in this and people that don't really feel strongly but still probably have a favorite teacher are just not going to vote. So that's voluntary response bias. All right. If you want more help with biases, there's a, a video at the link here, which I posted 
in the comments below or in the description below and this is a puppy from someone from a couple years ago it's adorable so i just added it into the video all right so that was bias so now you have a sporkle quiz to go practice it's a crossword puzzle so it, it should be pretty short and there is a homework assignment for this posted on google classroom please attempt that before our next class and then submit it online after class okay I'll see you next time. Bye.